John the Baptist has an appointment with destiny, and Reverend Taylor brings us face to face with that now. The story starts with questions about who Jesus really is. One answer is that he was the one whose way is prepared by John in life and death. Again and again, their stories touch. John has a message and dedicated disciples. Jesus' ministry follows a similar pattern. The innocent John is killed by powerful people who are threatened by his truth-telling. Jesus, too, dies at the hands of anxious political authority. Herod knows that John is not deserving of death. Pilate tries to derail Jesus' execution. John's followers come to take his body to a tomb. There is a tomb waiting for Jesus in Jerusalem as well. The point is not so much that John and Jesus are the same in some ways, but that speaking truth to power leads to the same kind of danger no matter who you are, master or disciple. It's amazingly uh, evil when you see what's going on there. A good man destroyed by this lousy tyrant. No matter how many times I hear this story, it is horrific every time. It never loses its edge for mm -hmm. me. And it, is, it, and it is frightening to know that as a Christian, when I take a stand, there are times that, that figuratively, for, for me anyway, I, I don't think I'll be in the situation where I'll literally be beheaded, but certainly figuratively, uh, when we take a stand that Jesus asks us to take, there is that danger. Figuratively, and of course, for ourselves and many of our viewers, you know, we are here in the United States. We yeah. probably don't have to worry about losing our heads. But of course, right now, people of faith all That's across right. the world still do. They still Things do. haven't changed. We yeah. still have Herods, and we still have a need for John the Baptist mm -hmm. of all types and variety. I, I can't help but hear and think about race relations, mm. um, gender issues, sure. um, because for women, oftentimes positions of power will keep us down either in the church, in community, for people of color it happens, for gay and lesbian people it happens, just because we believe that we have a right to be in this world. And I think we do ourselves a real disservice as the church when we sanitize our Bible stories. You know, from day one, telling our kids to what we'll talk about in church, that we don't hit these sordid details yeah. that are all over all the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, it just distances our own experience of faith from the real world. Exactly. As horrific as it is, I am so glad this is in Scripture, yeah. precisely because if it wasn't, then I would say it's unrealistic. But the fact is, this is real life that we live in. Uh -huh. The good still get killed, and the bad still sometimes do well. But, but, we know that the Jesus who is going to be crucified later in the story in Mark is also the Jesus who was raised from the dead and who says to us that these tyrants don't have the last they word. They don't have the last word. Even yeah. when they it don't. looks like they do. Should we be out sp trying to speak to power a lot more often than we do? Absolutely. And the more of us who do, the less of us, you can't cut off everybody's head at the same time. <laughs> so they wouldn't know which head to go after. <laughs> so if we can get more people speaking truth to power, perhaps real change can happen. But it's hard. You know, it's hard when these situations come up in real life. We all make compromises. We all back off a little bit here and there. Um, and if put into an ideal situation, of course, we're all willing to stand up for our God, for our faith, and we're put right our behind life. you. Exactly. We're right behind you. <laughs> Just yeah, let don't me, look God, back. let me know when that situation you, comes up, and I'll be happy to back. let you know. Keep marching. We're right behind you. <laughs> maybe, maybe a thousand feet. Behind right. But when it really comes up, I think a lot of us. Absolutely. can rationalize and, and reason ourselves out of a situation. And, and that's just what Reverend Taylor does. She challenges us to not let that be the case in this next excerpt from her radio message. The story of John's beheading is shocking, and it's meant to be. To shock us out of complacency in a faith that comes at little or no cost. Relatively few Christians, thanks be to God, are called to be martyrs. But all of us who would follow Christ are called to confront, as well as we can, the wrong we see around us, and confrontation is never comfortable. To pay that price is to stand with many who followed the path that John prepared 
for the one who came after him. Several years ago, William Sloan Coffin spoke to broadcasters in Boston who were trying to help with the integration of the, of the Boston public school system, and they were bemoaning to him how they were getting castigated by so many people. Instead of getting, you know, heroes awards, they were getting just nothing but vitriol. And he just laughed. He actually laughed at them, and he said, what did you expect? This is what happens to prophets. They don't get, you know, praised. They get dumped on. They even get killed. You know, what do we expect? from ourselves here. How do we take this to the next step? From childhood to the grave, uh, we count the cost. Am I really gonna follow Christ? Am I really going to take up the cross? Because I just might end up dying on it. Uh, whether literally or figuratively, the cost is real. And my constant prayer is, I believe God help my unbelief. And part of my unbelief is my fear in taking a stand and I pray constantly that God give me the courage to take the stance that I need to take as a believer in Christ. And I call myself a disciple of Jesus Christ but if I look at the people like James and John and Peter who did pay that ultimate price and I have not been called to do that you know it, it I can't help but question you know wonder if I am worthy. I do look at it like I am called to at-risk living and that means that regardless of what's going on, Jesus Christ has gone before me. Therefore, my suffering will not be in vain. I always have to ask myself, have I accumulated enough collateral to pay the cost? Have I spent enough time in communion, in relationship with God, in growing in my faith, that when the time comes that I have to pay that cost of discipleship, is there enough of me that I've gained and enough of God that I recognize in me to actually pay the cost. And somebody does need to speak truth to power. Thank you all for your reflections. Thank you, Reverend Taylor, for your message. And thank you for being with us on day one.